Welcome to the Top Advisor Podcast, brought to you by Proud Mouse Pod Rocket Academy. I'm your host, Bill Cates, creator of the Cates Academy for Relationship Marketing. In each episode, I interview one of our industry's top performers, getting them to pass on their secrets to success to you so that you can impact more lives and generate more income. Now, on to the show. Welcome, welcome. You know, one question I get fairly often from advisors goes like this. Bill, I have a client who wants to tell their friends about me and they want to send them to my website. Is that a good idea? That's a hard question to answer with a simple yes or no. It's often a good idea to create a way that helps your clients facilitate this introduction, a way that feels comfortable to everyone. And to that end, for years, I've been urging advisors to add a special page on their website devoted to prospects who are being sent by their friends, family, and colleagues. This would be a great page for a quick video from you. I always envision this sort of page as a fairly generic and not necessarily personalized to the specific visitor. However, I've just discovered a tool that's easy to use and super affordable that allows you to quickly and easily create a website page devoted to the exact person being introduced to you. This page can have their name on it. You can easily record a short video, perfectly personalizing the welcome message. If you've learned a little something about the prospect from the introducer, which is usually a good thing to do, you can mention that in this quick video. Now, from my point of view, this could be a real game changer for you and, and how your clients talk about you to others and helping them feel super comfortable and making it very easy to make these meaningful connections. The company that created this tool is called Pageport. The tool allows you to do exactly what I just described. Plus, you can also track the activity on that page and trigger follow-up messages to that prospect if you want. I highly recommend you go to pageport.com forward slash bill. That's pageport, P-A-G-E-P-O-R-T dot com forward slash bill. I'll greet you there uh, on that page with a quick little video so you'll kind of see how it works. And because you're a listener to Top Advisor Podcast, you'll save 10% off the already ridiculously low subscription. Seriously, I've told these guys they should raise their subscription rate, but at least for now, they're keeping things low. So that's pageport.com forward slash bill. Now on with today's show. I think you're going to find the evolution of today's show interesting and hopefully helpful. A few years ago, I had the honor to work with one of the oldest RIAs in the country, Bernie Wealth Management, headquartered in Western Virginia. And this was a typical training and coaching relationship for me where we put all their advisors through our Kate's Academy for Relationship Marketing. We did an in-person session and I followed up with several virtual coaching sessions. And just a few months ago, one of their partners, Kyle McFarlane, reached out to me to let me know of a firm that they had used to freshen up their messaging, their website and marketing processes. And in fact, here's the exact email message that I received from Kyle, who had just attended one of my uh, webinars. So it goes like this. He says, your virtual coaching session was fantastic as always. Thank you, Kyle. It served as an excellent review of the topics we previously discussed during your visit to our office. I'm excited to introduce you to two individuals at Craft Impact, Stephen Beach and Faustin Weber. Faustin Weber. Uh, Craft Impact is our marketing and communication agency and has played a crucial role in our recent accomplishments. With their assistance, we've been able to generate more referrals and transform qualified leads into customers through innovative digital marketing techniques. Given the overlap in your businesses, I think you guys would find value in connecting. So this was Kyle's flattering and pretty compelling way of introducing me to today's featured guest, Stephen Beach. It occurred to me that a great template for today's show would be a case study of what Stephen and his firm, Craft Impact, did for Bernie Wealth Management. So let me therefore introduce you to Stephen Beach, Stephen is the co-founder of Craft Impact, headquartered in Tampa, St. Pete area, uh, Florida. Craft Impact works with financial advisory firms of about two million to thirty million in annual revenue to attract prospects, to increase referrals, and convert more qualified leads. To you, the listener of today's show, it doesn't matter the size of your firm or how long you've been in business. Most, if not all, of the principles and strategies and methods that we'll be discussing today can be applied to your business. 
Stephen Beach, graduate of Notre Dame, husband and father of three young children. Welcome to Top Advisor Podcast. Thanks so much, Bill. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Last time I saw you, we were sharing some uh, grits and bacon and eggs at a coffee shop down here in St. Pete. So it's good to see you again. Yeah, it was a great little place. Uh, unexpected, uh, fun breakfast. And I, at first, I want to start with, I know you got your degree from Notre Dame. Uh, you got the shirt on with the logo on it. I, I'm, I'm guessing the degree was not in digital marketing, right? So tell us, how in the heck did you become such an expert in digital marketing for financial service terms, firms? Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. I'm uh, trying to share the Notre Dame brand as much as I can. I just booked tickets to the Ohio State Notre Dame game, so we're excited about that. We'll probably get beat by a couple of touchdowns, but we'll have fun <laughs> while we do it. Um, yes. Yeah, so I got into, I'll share my quick story with you and the listeners just to give you some more context, and and then we can dive into Kyle's um, you know case study of Bernie Wealth Management that you led into. Um, but uh, yeah, I graduated from Notre Dame, and, and um, I came out and, and started a volunteer position, then got into an advertising role in Chicago. Um, I think I was making $27,000 living in Chicago, so um, yeah, I had five roommates. Uh, but anyhow... Um, my dad started a company in 2010 and him, him and my mother put a, uh, a good amount of money into it to start it up. And within six months he was diagnosed with a, with a brain tumor. So he said, you know, if there's any time uh, to work for me, it would be now, you know, we need, we need some help with sales. So I jumped on and I said, sure, I'll do sales. Let's do sales. Um, what does that mean? You know, so I just started cold calling trade shows, you know, literally walking in on people's offices, like just knocking on their door and asking them if I could have 10 minutes of their time, kind of the old school way. Um, I discovered inbound marketing and, and digital marketing. I took over our company's website and started to, you know, build content. I taught myself inbound marketing and I, I learned a lot from HubSpot, um, which was a, a pretty simple marketing software tool back then and uh, started to generate my own leads. And so these people would fill out the, the contact us form or whatever form it was on the site. And, you know, I'd call them and uh, they'd be, actually be wanting to talk to me. So that was very different uh, compared to what I was used to. Uh, that's kind of my uh, that kind of launched me into digital marketing world in general. Um, my dad passed away a couple of years after that. And, and um, I kept with the company, but eventually I went to his partner who still runs the firm and um you know, I said, Hey, I'd love to do this work for you on a freelance basis. If you're open to that, uh, we could come up with some kind of agreement, hourly rate, whatever you like. And, uh, we came up to, a to a mutual agreement and, and, uh, you know, he was my first client. They're still our client. So that was back in uh, 2012. Um, so they're, they're still, uh, you know, a very happy client of ours. We've got a great relationship, but that, that's kind of what launched me into the whole digital marketing space. Uh, sorry about your dad, and it's a it's a great story, and I'm sure you were it was great for you to be able to work with him in that regard uh, and help him grow his business, which is part of his legacy and now part of your legacy. So let's dive into Bernie Management. Uh, who found who, and what? Give us a quick genesis of how you guys started working together. Sure. So Bernie Wealth, we connected with Lowell Pratt, president chairman of of the Bernie Company. So. Um, Bernie Wealth is a part of that and um, connected on LinkedIn with Lowell. Um, you know, he mentioned they've been looking for some help with branding, messaging, digital marketing in general. So we started to have these kind of um, exploratory calls, we call them. And just that involves me, you know, asking questions and then being quiet and trying to learn, you know, what the challenges are and, and learn more about the business and, um, you know, see if we could be a good fit to, to help or not. Um, so they had, they had been burnt with, um, uh, their experiences in the past. I, I suppose you, you would say, um, they were a little scarred by those. They were apprehensive about hiring another marketing agency, um, which is a common theme across this financial advisory space. I've, I've definitely come to find out, um, a lot of just, uh, poor, you know, experiences out there that people are, are really trying hard not to replicate. Um, so we started talking with them about, uh, about their messaging. And, and, um, I remember one of the conversations was, you know, I said, if, if I asked 10 people in your company, what do you guys do? Um, you know, what, what would everybody say? Um, would they be different answers? I mean, the consensus was it'd be about 10 different answers, you know? And so, um, the first project was let's figure out what really, what our messaging should be, who our, uh, target clientele is and, 
how do we, you know, craft messaging that's concise and that resonates with them, you know, and let's, let's start there. So that was kind of what, what kicked us off with, with Bernie Wealth. So you started with the messaging makes sense. I always start with that when I'm coaching folks as well. What other challenges do you feel they had or that they express or sometimes opportunities that they felt they, you know, weren't achieving? Uh, talk to us about some of the early conversations. Yeah. So, you know, Bernie, I, I think Bernie Wealth realized that um, they had an opportunity, opportunity to improve their marketing. Their client experience was already really good. Um, you know, their retention rate is extremely high. They, they do great work with their clients. They start with an intensive financial pr planning process. And, um, you know, they have a lot of, uh, of great services under their, under their wealth management uh, bucket, you could call it. Um, they had struggled to kind of put a real marketing strategy in place and, um, you know, follow up on it. As simple as that sounds, it's, it's, they, they had struggled to find the right partner, um, either externally or internally that could say, okay, we're going to set a marketing strategy here that aligns with your business goals and we're going to execute on it. And then we're going to look back and measure what just happened. And then we're going to, we're going to improve on it for the next round. Um, they, they kind of, they just struggled to find the right fit. Um, you know, Kyle shared with me, um, they realized they wanted to take digital marketing more seriously. They felt like they could, um, you know, expand their, um, clientele. They felt like they could, you know, do more good work for more clients, um, just needed to kind of figure out the right messaging, how to get the word out and, and that type of thing. So, um, but they also realized, Hey, we're good. We're good at financial advising. Um, you know, we're good financial advisors. We're not, we're not good marketers. It's really hard to do both at the same time. Um, so like I said, they tried a couple, uh, agencies in the past. Um, one of the common problems I see in the space is agencies that, that try to break into the financial advisor space that just do not understand the business models. They don't understand, um, you know, the clients, they don't understand kind of the services provided and, and, and granted it can get fairly technical and there's compliance involved and, you know, th these type of things, it can, it can get a little bit more advanced. Um, so they felt like they were kind of, you know, having to slow down a lot to sort of uh, train whoever it was that was trying to do their marketing work and uh, just felt like they were wasting time. And then internally, you know, they tried to hire internally before and struggle with that too, because again, they're not, they're not marketers. So how, you know, how are we going to manage a, a marketing role and, a, and build a marketing department? And uh, ultimately just decided, okay, we want to, let's focus on what we're good at financial advising. And then we can, we can outsource the, the marketing piece of this. Um, so that was kind of our, our offering our end was, you know, we'll be your outsourced CMO and we have a built-in uh, team for executing the plans. And uh, let's sit at the table with you and, and, and really try to be strategic and be a value add um, and try to align what we're doing digital marketing wise to your overall mm -hmm. company goals, you know, and, um, and by the way, we know what a, what an ETF is, you know, and we know how to run <laughs> things through compliance and that type of thing. And, and we know that there's sensitivities with, you know, what you can and can't say that just having that type of, you know, baseline understanding, I think helped us a lot. So we could kind of skip ahead a few steps with them and, and get right into the, to the strategy. I think you actually bring up an important concept or important thing for folks to think about. So <clears throat> for instance, I'm uh, giving a presentation to a group, uh, an RA up, uh, north of Baltimore in Towson, Maryland, and they hired an internal uh, marketing person who did come from financial services. So she has that experience and that knowledge. I've also seen firms that hire marketing folks who don't have that prior knowledge. So I think if the principals, the partners are decent marketers, they can manage and direct that person to some degree if they don't have that experience. But if they don't, you know, it's, you know, like you said, how can, how, if you're not a great marketer, how can you manage someone in that role? If you don't even know what's possible, if you don't know the basic principles. So I think that's, you know, bringing an in-house outsourcing, those are some of the important considerations. You have a, a blog on your website, a lot of good articles. One of them <clears throat> caught my attention. It's, it's entitled Effective Messaging, How to Build Your Story and Find Your Inner Yoda. So most folks listening know that in Star Wars, Yoda, the guide was. Uh, tell us about this concept. How did you apply it to Bernie Wealth Management? 
Sure. So messaging. Okay. So I'll say this. We start, we start with messaging on all of our engagements now with clients. I've tried to skip this step in the past and it just comes back to bite us in the butt, you know? So it's like, okay, we're doing messaging first and that's a, that's a non-negotiable. So, um, we start there. What, how we approach messaging. Um, we kind of have two different, um, two different initiatives that we run simultaneously on uh, with one another. So messaging, we do internal workshops and we use this framework called story brand. Um, so that's kind of internally. And then simultaneously to that, we go externally and we interview our clients, clients. So for Bernie wealth, uh, management's case, we said, Hey, if you guys are comfortable with it, um, submit us a list of five to 10 of your ideal fit clients that you would love to replicate. If you could just, you know, duplicate these people and they've become more clients, like what would they look like and who are they and that type of thing. So, so Bernie went to those clients and said, hey, would it be okay if you talk to these, to these folks, this is our new marketing partner, um, you know, and, and just interview with them and so on. So there's some prep work there. Um, I think they ended up giving us like 18 people. And uh, so we, we interviewed all wow. 18. Yeah, each wow. interview is like 15 to 30 minutes, but some of them went longer just because we were kind of jiving and they're, they're friendly people. Um, so anyhow, you do those two things in, in parallel and they kind of feed off of each other. But the one is story brand. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, story brand is a, is a very systemized, um, structured, uh, set of, uh, two workshops and then a final presentation, uh, take you through a seven step framework. Um, to really um, define your your um, ideal buyer, they call it a character, um, and then craft messaging around that. So the end goal would be out of the story brand project to to come up with messaging that is clear, concise, and compelling. So again, if I ask 10, 10 people from your firm, what do you guys do? Um, at the end of this, we, we're going to have a framework and a, a deliverable piece that everyone can refer to that then they can use, you know, all of your employees and your staff and your advisors can use this elevator pitches. And whenever they meet somebody, you know, walking down the, the hallway at a conference room or whatever it is. Um, so we start there. The seven steps are, are pretty basic, but it's, you know, who, who's your ideal um, persona, your character? Uh, what does the character want? You know, um, like emotionally, psychologically, what are they, what are they looking for? Um, they meet a guide. This is where Yoda comes in. They meet a guide. So you're positioning your firm as the guide uh, who can help them with their problem. Um, the guide introduces them to the services and then calls them to action, which would be set up a consultation or submit your information here. Um, and then the guide shows them what success looks like and what failure looks like. Um, and that's kind of the, the overall framework. So we do that internally and we get everyone in, in the room and you know, that's the leadership team and anybody else who's who's interested um, to kind of answer our questions and go through those workshops. But then, like I said, on top of that, we we interview the clients themselves, which is really the that's the secret, Bill. It's like that is where the golden nuggets come from. Uh, we talk with these clients and they share things with us that uh, I mean, it, it's 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 shocking what they share with us sometimes. And, uh, and it's really fun. Um, so we try to, we take those and we extract, uh, we call it key themes and opportunities out of those interviews. So there's so much information. There's so many things you could possibly be saying or be baking into your messaging. So we need to distill that down. So we distill it down into this presentation, key themes and opportunities here, are the, here, are the, you know, in Bernie's case, I think it was about 10 themes. We keep hearing these same things from your clients. Like they keep telling us they love the personal attention, like the personal support that they're getting. They feel like when they work with Bernie, it's not just about, um, you know, the assets and her management. They feel like it's about the relationship and you guys are asking them about their kids and their, you know, their marriages and, you know, the, the wedding that they just went to and things like that. They're, you know, it's part of a relationship, things like that. You know, we love the, the quarterly webinar that Bernie does. Um, love it. Like I, I attend everyone. If I don't, I watch it on demand, you know, two themes right there. So we go, okay, that's, um, continuing education, even for existing clients and also the, the personal relationship. And, you know, what does that look like? So we, we kind of extract those and then you've got all this information now. So we've got to, we've got to figure out a way to, um, to pick, you know, what are we going to focus on in our messaging? So then we build a, um, a exclusivity and importance matrix, which sounds really fancy, but it's, it's pretty simple. Take those 10 themes and, and rank them on a scale of one to five on uh, importance. So how important is this to our firm? And then exclusivity. 
how unique are we um, in, in being able to deliver on this theme, you know, to these, to these clients? Um, if they say, you know, um, financial planning, you know, we really like financial planning. Okay. That's important. It's not very exclusive. You know, a lot of firms do financial planning to start off the relationship and, and that's not, you know, you're not super unique in that space. So what else can we pull from? So we're trying to kind, we're, we're trying to kind of synthesize these two things, external and internal, and then bake them all into this big deliverable that we then hand over to Bernie and say, this is your, this is your messaging guide. It's a, it's a framework, you know, that, that'll define anything that we produce communications, sales materials, marketing materials, and also what your people can refer to, you know, a lot of them just print it off and have it on their desk and kind of refer to these these different sections of the, of the messaging framework so that they have it when they're talking to prospects, talking to clients, you know, giving clients things to, to share with other folks, which is what you coach on a lot. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been really valuable to start with that. It kind of aligns everyone, you know, and then um, we take about four to six weeks to, to deliver that. And then, uh, and then we move into all the other marketing tactics and, and things that follow. I, I want to comment on a couple of those things, but for, first of all, this is something that I encourage folks to do as well. Talk to your clients. Sometimes they will say things in ways that you wouldn't think about, right? So you get verbiage, right? I, I had a client tell me one that Michael Schmidt said it, San Mateo, California says, Bill, you, I tell folks that you make asking for referrals as natural as breathing. And I'm going, wow, that's pretty cool. I, I wouldn't think of saying that. And, and I don't actually say it, I use it, but I always quote Michael Schmitz. So instead of bragging, I'm just quoting. <laughs> uh, I had, I was coaching a couple guys and they started doing this with some clients and one client says, oh, I, I call you guys the dream makers. And they said, what do you be, mean about that? Well, you, you've told us there's nothing worse than an unfunded dream. You know, I have some goals and dreams and you make sure I'm setting money aside to do those and accomplish those things. And they go, yeah, that's it. It's like, to me, that's a right fit client, someone who appreciates our value for all the reasons we want them to appreciate our value. So great thing. But you did say something I, that I'm not going to let pass. Uh, when you first started talking about this, you said they said some really... I don't know if we use the word weird or strange or crazy or amazing things. I mean, did you hear strange things or was it just that it all, they all kind of said the same thing in different ways? <laughs> no, you hear some strange things. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> well, like, what, calls, can you remember any? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, sitting there, uh, you'd be talking to somebody on zoom and they're, you know, somewhere on their retirement home in Montana, you know, in their, boxer briefs, basically talking to me on zoom, uh, just as comfortable as ever, like we're old buddies. And, uh, it's just, it can, you know, lead to some funny, uh, interactions, I guess. Some, some people are very free with what they share, uh, especially to me, if I'm a neutral third party, you know, I approach it like, Hey, I'm here to listen. Here's the questions. Um, I'd love to get your unique insight into your re working relationship with, with this company. Um, I would love to hear more about, you know, why you chose them over the others. What made them such a great choice, um, you know, over the competitors that you were considering? I know you were considering others, right? So, um, you know, what, what was it? And, uh, yeah, some of the things they share, um, geez, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure, I'm what, sure, sure how much I can, uh, how much I can share. I'll share one real quick, actually. Okay. Uh, um, right. This is probably fine. Uh, if not, then uh, Kyle can tell us, but. <laughs> yeah, there was a uh, there was a financial advisor um, with Bernie Wealth who was described to me as being easy on the eyes. So this is the uh, the husband and the wife were were on a call, and um, you know I I was just asking about their relationship with their with their personal financial advisor at Bernie, and you know the wife said something about yeah he's not you know he's not too too hard on the eyes or something like that, and the husband was like yeah I mean yeah can't disagree. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so just little things like that. Um, you know, other, other personal things too, is just folks just sharing, Hey, um, I would invite them over for, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd host a wine and charcuterie night at my house. If they wanted to come to my house and I'll invite, you know, 30 of my neighbors and friends, like I would mm -hmm. definitely do that. You know, we heard that several times, that type of specific opportunity, like I'm happy to host a cocktail hour or charcuterie night. Like, and multiple, I didn't suggest these things. This is coming independently from multiple people. So that's what I mean by key themes. It's like, okay, this is, these are, these are things that, you know, keep coming up. These are, these are opportunities that I think, 
um, you know, there's some consensus here with, you know, where you could go with this. So yeah, some of those, some of those kind of conversations. That's great. You know, I, I often coach advisors when they're thinking about doing some social event marketing, which I'm a big fan of talk to your clients and about different venues, about different types of things. Maybe they've been to a venue, they have access to a venue. And this has come up many times where the advisor's talking to the client about possibilities and the client says, well, you know, we love to entertain. We'd be happy to invite folks, right? Just, you're not asking for it, but it comes from them. And that could be a pretty cool event. Uh, you also mentioned something uh, through the uh, story brand process, which I also have gone through. Uh, and I love this, uh, the three C's, clear, concise, and compelling. Uh, I just read a book on financial planning written by actually a, an old business partner of mine in a, a book publishing company that, that, that he and I own together. And he wrote a book on um, uh, estate planning and all the decisions, but it, he's very clever and very funny. And I read through the book, he wanted to know my opinion. And I said, well, you know, you're very clever. You know that you're quite, quite have a way with words. But because of that cleverness, I'm not sure I got the actual point, right? I, it was uh, obscured a little bit by the cleverness. So we never want our cleverness. We want to be creative. We want to be clever sometimes. That's what you do in marketing and trying to attract the eye and the interest, but not at the expense of clarity. Very right. important uh, point there, right? Yeah, I love uh, that. Can, I mean, when somebody comes to your website, I tell people, they, they have to understand immediately within two seconds, you know, wh what do you do and who do you do it for? But then the other key is, you know, how do you make it not about you so much? I, I don't want to, you know, how do you right. turn it in? That's the, that's the other thing with story brand is it does a really good job of, of making the character the hero of the story. You know, right. they're the hero. You're not the hero. You're the, you're, you're there, you're the guide, um, but they are the hero of their own story. So you're there to guide them. You know, and that's that's a really tough thing for people to to kind of flip that on its head sometimes. But uh, but yeah, you're you're definitely right. It's got to be concise. It's got to be compelling and it's got to be clear. Well, if if you haven't done the work of figuring out who you really do want to attract, who those personas, characters, avatars, whatever word you want to use, then you're going to talk about what you do know, which is yourself. And so you end up making the website and all the copy about yourself when it really should be about them and they should see themselves in that copy. So this is a good segue to my next question, which I know I, I've heard you say that a firm's website is their most important digital asset. Why do you say that? Um, and maybe some best practices or some things that, that you did for Bernie uh, around that. Yeah. I think a firm's website, I think it should be looked at as, as your house, you know, so a lot of times what advisors do and not just advisors, folks from different industries do is, is they, they're trying to find a quick way. They're trying to find a silver bullet. They're trying to find, you know, something that gets them ROI as quick as possible, you know? Um, so paid ads could be an example of that. Um, and I've, I've talked to a lot of advisors who, uh, who've gone through this and they're burnt and they're really frustrated and it's a huge waste of money, but they'll spend 20 grand on paid ads, you know? Um, Paid ads are rented space. As soon as you stop paying the bill, the paid ads stop showing up. So the house is your, your website is your house in the sense that you own that. That is your marketing asset. The more you build on that, the, the more valuable that asset becomes. And so I really encourage people, think of it that way. Start with your house. Start with messaging as the foundation. That's the concrete slab, if you will. You gotta start with messaging and then, and then build on that. So that means, you know, um, build content into it, build the right branding into it. Just continue to, to use it as an educational tool for your clients and your prospects um, and, and treat it as such. And then it's okay if you want to supplement your house with some paid ads and, and money that um, you know goes to Google or Facebook or LinkedIn or what have you. That's, that, that can be part of the strategy too. And there's, there's definitely cases where that makes sense. But you know, the paid ads are rented space. The, the website is your, is your house. That's kind of how I, I look at it owned real estate, your email list, owned real estate, LinkedIn, rented real estate, right? Uh, could go away tomorrow uh, if LinkedIn changes things. Uh, I, I want to remind everybody, I just, you, you gave me an idea. I, I created a guide, I call it, it's based on my book, Radical Relevance, and it's about websites and how to build a radically relevant website. I am going to put a link to that 
in the show notes. So you can access the show notes uh, now, get it. If uh, you go to topadvisorpodcast.com and look for this episode with Stephen, uh, it'll be in the show notes. Uh, shoot me an email, bill at referralcoach.com. Bill, send me that guide you have around websites and it'll supplement what uh, Stephen's been talking about. So let's focus on uh, two aspects of Bernie's website homepage. Uh, f- first, their messaging in their banner which is probably the most important part of a website, right? It's the most valuable real estate because that's what people are, are going to see first. So uh, I'm going to read this a little bit, then Stephen, I ask you to comment. So their headline reads as follows. In very large text, it says, a good life doesn't plan itself. That's kind of a, a curiosity thing. Ah, okay, yeah. Especially if someone kind of knows and wants a plan, that's going to jive totally. Slightly smaller text that says, feel secure about your family's future. Secure. That's one of those very clear, emotionally, you know, benefit type words. That's what people want to feel. One of the many things they want to feel. And then smaller still, a clear strategy to protect and build your wealth, which is what people want, right? We're talking benefits now. To protect and build your wealth is essential. Be confident in your financial plan and at peace about the future. So I think this is good copy. Um, It hits on some emotional buttons, secure, protect, build wealth. Um, And it kind of hints at the possibility of, uh, you know, making a mistake of not having a plan, which the brain latches onto, you know, the fear of missing out because the brain wants to feel safe at all times. So can you remember <laughs> the process that produced this nice opening message? Um, well, so all credit goes to Bernie. First off, I would say uh, Lowell and, uh, and his team were, they were great in the workshops. I mean, they had all kinds of ideas. The, the, the thing is, Bernie already had kind of a good idea of what they wanted um, in the sense of, uh, you know, the messaging and what they were trying to convey. It was just really hard for them to put it to finalize it, I guess, you know, to, to figure out what to prioritize and, and to finalize it and get some more direction with it. So, um, a good life doesn't plan itself. I want to say, I'm going to give credit to Lowell there. I want to say that was like his, you know, his baby from a while ago, but, but the whole idea was, I, I like what you hit on there with, um, kind of the, the previewing the negative almost that's, that's, that's a little bit of what story brand does too. That's why we, we show them, you know, the guide shows the hero of the story, shows them um, the plan, calls them to action, shows them what success looks like. In other words, hey, if you work with us, this is kind of what it looks like. Here's the very simple three-step process and here's what it leads to. But then also um, shows them what what happens if you don't work with us, you know, and if you continue on the path that you're on where you're, you're not being helped by this financial advisor who's going to solve these problems for you. It's almost like... Um, you know, the story brand guide on our team, he's, um, he's a certified story brand guide. He'll, he'll tell people it's, it's kind of like when you're baking a cake, you, you, you add a pinch of salt to it. You don't want to overdo it because it'll, it'll ruin the cake very quickly, but a little pinch of salt is, uh, is helpful. So that's why you build in the, the negative. Um, but you're also building in the other things that you mentioned, you know, empathy. Hey, we get it. It's tough. You, you, you're a busy professional. You have, you're balancing all these different things. You've, you've, you've got this need, like we get it. And then another thing would be authority. Um, uh, we've been around for this many years and, um, here's the credibility that we have, you know, in Bernie Wealth's case, I mean, uh, top ranking in Virginia, they're the top RIA, RIA by CNBC, um, top 10 nationally. That uh, ranking just came out and they're really proud of that. That's a piece of authority that we then use across marketing deliverables. But yeah, that gets baked into uh, to the messaging framework too. Um, so that, that's all that's all part of it for sure. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's the same thing that advisors, I believe, should talk to their clients about. What what uh, in even in meetings, right? There, yes, there's a cost to moving forward, and there's a cost to to doing nothing. Um, there's a course to staying, you know, a cost to staying the course. That's how you take what a client may see as aspirational. Yeah. Someday I'll get life insurance or whatever. Well, okay. Well, let's see what happens, you know, tomorrow, if you didn't have it right, there's a cost. So that's kind of what you're, you, you allude to, and you're right. You don't want to get overly negative around that, but a little hint at it. Uh, I think it's important. So, 
There are at least, Stephen, two more big questions I have for you. Uh, one, um, provide a, 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 they provide, sorry, they provide a, a sample financial plan that visitors can download. So I want to talk to you about that. I've not seen other firms do that on our website. And the second thing I want to talk about is a concept called cognitive uh, fluency. It's out of cognitive neuroscience. Yes, there is such a thing called cognitive fluency. You probably didn't think about it in these words, but you've incorporated that into your website, into their website. So I want to talk about that. But first, let's take a brief pause to listen to a word from our sponsor, Pod Rocket Influence Academy, brought to you by Proudmouth. First, they make this podcast possible, and their core business is helping financial advisors, like you listening, uh, accelerate their influence through marketing activities like podcasting. This podcast is sponsored by Proudmouth, the Influence Accelerators. Tired of chasing potential clients? We help you spend less time selling and more time advising by amplifying your influence over a growing audience of magnetically attracted fans who will chase you down instead. Visit proudmouth.com to learn more. We have a new tool that you just might want to check it out. It's it's called Rapid Fire Referrals. If you're new to my work, this is a great affordable entry point to some of my processes. And if you've been following me for some time, this is also a great tool to keep our processes and your exponential growth top of mind. One of our advisor clients named it uh, named Rapid Fire Referrals the Habit Maker. So in a nutshell, once per week for 52 weeks, you receive a short, high-content video lesson geared to provide actions that you can implement, hopefully right away, to start multiplying your best clients and turning that incremental growth into exponential growth. In addition to the weekly lessons, you also get access to a bonus uh, interview of me that provides with a great great overview context of my complete system from the very beginning so all the lessons become that much more meaningful and look you may get sick of me after 52 lessons that's fine but but i can guarantee you won't be sick of the results producing ideas provided in each video so as a listener uh, of top advisor podcast which you are at this moment you also receive a $100 off on the regular investments uh, of $297. So that's $197 for all these lessons, the bonus interview. Just use the coupon code RFR100. Do yourself a favor. Head over to rapidfirereferrals.com after we finish this conversation with Stephen Beach. That's rapidfirereferrals.com, coupon code RFR100. Now back to my featured guest, Stephen Beach. As promised, we're going to cover two more important topics. First of all, offering a sample financial plan for download on the website and a concept known as cognitive fluency. Let's start with the latter. So in my book, Radical Relevance, I discuss a concept known as cognitive fluency, and it has to do with the importance of clarity of one's messaging and of one's processes. So essentially, if a prospect or a client understands your process, if they're clear on the steps they will go through to become a client and work with you moving forward, they are more likely to trust you and continue with that process. The more clear they are on what's next, they're more likely to take that next step. This is why I place great emphasis on advisors communicating their uh, process to prospects as, as clearly as possible illustrating that process on their websites, which Bernie does, and talking about their process with brand new prospects all along the journey. So Bernie delineates their three-step process right on their homepage. Some will do a five-step process, some seven. I don't recommend more than seven. Uh, so do you remember this conversation about this and, and the reasoning behind putting that process right on the homepage rather than burying it uh, deeper into the site? Yeah. So, okay. Yes. Um, so a few things I'll pull from this in terms of principles that I think everyone could learn from. Um, I, I love the, I love the cognitive fluency definition. Um, hundred percent agree, uh, with, with story brand, we try to limit it to three steps or less just to make it easy on, on people to kind of digest and consume. Um, and then from there also, uh, one other thing I was going to add is, um, we developed what we call it a client success map. It's a very simple one pager PDF. That's, that's uh, mostly visuals that shares with 
with folks what your process is and it's already on the website just in different forms but it's something that advisors can say um or, sorry can send the prospects after that first initial exploratory call if you will the first uh fit call um you know send me some information as a follow-up okay what do i send them you know we call it a client success map we turn that three-step process into a visual so it just goes um, it's a nice piece that people can kind of grab onto and say, okay, I, I get it. You know, it's, it's simple, but it's compelling. Um, so yeah. go ahead. I was just gonna say client success map roadmap. Yeah. Here's your process for moving forward. That's that, that helps the prospect just feel more comfortable and trusting about moving forward. Exactly. And, and, it, and it puts them in the driver's seat. I think that's like the, such a key theme that we're trying to drive home is it, you, your firm doesn't really matter. Your, your services don't really matter. You know, they, they, they come secondary to what, you know, what matters the most would be the client and the client experience and what their needs are and what their challenges are and what they're really asking for. So that the best firms will extract that information then, and then align their services and, and, um, and their delivery to, to that. So, you know, put them first, put them as the driver, put them as the hero of the story, the main character, whatever you want to call it, and then create all of your material kind of following through that filter. So the, the client success map, the roadmap, it allows people to see, okay, here's where I'm at. You know, I'm at, I'm at phase zero. Uh, this is the path they're going to, they're going to guide me down. And um, it gives them a really clear, you know, it kind of, it kind of, I think what it does is sort of starts to disarm the prospect. You talked about like, disarmament and and how do you do that there's a couple things that that we've learned um one the more people read on bernie's website and browse around articles and download uh the sample financial plan or you know um or uh, attend a webinar for example or watch an on-demand webinar um they're more likely to convert they're they're becoming they're sort of qualifying themselves so it's it's a principle of um, consumption drives conversion. The more they consume, the the higher likelihood it is that they're going to convert into a into a client. And then they'll also kind of um, qualify themselves in or out, depending on you know um, not just their investable assets amount, but other factors too. You kind of get a good feel for the advisors and and whether or not they're going to be a good fit to help you or you know or not uh, based on the content and and um, you know what they're putting out there. So I, I think those things are those things are really important to, to just stay focused on as you, as you think about kind of lead nurturing and, and uh, what the experience is before some, even before somebody signs up. Steven, I have one more big question for you. I mentioned earlier, Bernie is offering a download of a sample financial plan, but before we get to that, uh, if a listener is interested in learning more about you, how you work with advisory firms, how should they proceed go to your website, send you an email. What, how, how should they reach out to you? Sure. Yeah. Find me on LinkedIn, Stephen with a PH beach, just like it sounds. I'm in Florida. So, you know, B E A C H that should be simple to remember. Find me on LinkedIn and shoot me a message. I'd love to love to talk with you and, and kind of hear what your challenges are as a firm and then share with you, not just for Bernie, but some of our other RIA clients, what's been working well and uh, see if you can kind of extrapolate from that for your own firm. Um, that and the website's craftimpact.com C R A F T impact impact.com great also in the show notes all right so big question i have visited thousands of financial advisor websites over the years interviewing coaching just poking around i don't think i've ever seen a firm offer a sample financial plan on their website i could see pros and cons to this why did you guys do that was that your idea was that bernie's idea how did that happen and and you know in a nutshell uh, is it working? Is it helping? Uh, it's working really well. I think they would, I think they would definitely, um, agree with me on that. The, the idea there is, you know, they want to show, don't tell. So let's, let's show the prospect the value that they're going to get instead of, um, try to pitch them on it and, and try to convey it verbally. So you download a sample financial plan. We, we started to, we started to get a, a better understanding of how, valuable this piece was um you know during that messaging workshop and kind of the strategy discussions we had early on and we go a little further with it it's like this thing is really you know comprehensive and really thorough and there's a lot of hours to go into this with multiple advisors and you know it's presented on a call and and um this is all before somebody signs a um you know uh, an engagement proposal so 
um, what if we removed all the confidential information out of that? And that way we could convey, we could really show people what they're getting and, and what the relationship looks like, um, you know, and, uh, and help kind of lead them down that path. Like just let them again, let them make their own decision, let them, um, you know, be in control of the process, but also let's, let's give them something that's super educational at the same time. So that's, that was the thought there. Um, Bernie's never built a, a PowerPoint to walk people through and try to sell them, you know, on the, on the final call, uh, their approach was, you know, um, we want to show, uh, uh, the level of, of financial planning that we go into and kind of show you what the next plan, you know, the, the six to 12 month plan looks like. And it's been awesome because now if you go to the website, um, I mean, most of the website is directing people to that. It's, it's the main lead magnet um, that's on the website. And so again, it, it helps people kind of qualify themselves. You know, it, it gets them more and more familiar with Bernie, it's people, but also it's process um, kind of leads them further down the, further down the funnel. And, and it's all again, in the context of the client is the one who's in charge here. They're in the driver's seat. So I think that's, that was the idea. And the other thing I'll add to that, that people could take, take with them is most websites, they have a, they have really one place where people can submit their information. So you go to a website, it's a contact us form. And it's important to remember most of the people, like 99.2 to 99.5% of people are not going to fill out that form. They're going to leave your website whether you know it or not, they're just going to come and they're going to leave. And you have no idea that they're, that they've ever visited you. So let's come up with something that is sort of an in-between, like how do we give them a piece of information that's valuable enough that they're going to actually submit their information to you, but it's not so, you know, bottom of the funnel. It's not like, Hey, will you marry me? It's more like, Hey, let's go on a date. You know, let's, let's test it out. So that that's the, kind of the idea of the sample financial plan. Yeah, I love it. I think it's a great idea. It creates what's in what's fairly intangible planning. It makes it just a little bit more tangible. My featured guest on today's show has been Stephen Beach, B-E-A-C-H. I like to say Stephen at the beach. That's how I remember. Uh, Co-founder of Craft Impact. Uh, Stephen, thank you for being a great guest uh, with us today on Top Advisor Podcast. Bill, thanks for talking with me. I love it. And uh, open to uh, get some more work together with you soon. It's been awesome collaborating with you. And I'm, I'm really impressed by what you deliver to, to clients. I just want to make a little plug for your services there because you're just delivering value over and over and over again on a half hour call. You know, it's it's packed with information that uh, that's very tactical and and I think um, very valuable for advisors. So there's a, there's the plug for Bill. But yeah, thanks so much for for having me on. Yeah. I should, we should also thank Kyle McFarlane with Bernie Wealth Management uh, for their firm's permission to you to feature them in the episode. Uh, to you, the listener of this podcast, uh, I'd like to ask you a quick favor. Uh, if you like the episode, you like the podcast in general, please leave a five-star review on the platform uh, which you're listening to the show. Not all platforms have a place for review, but uh, if it does, please do that. It, it really helps us. I'll be grateful. Uh, if you haven't already, head over to referralcoach.com forward slash resources, sign up for our weekly tips, access a ton of free guides, scripts, and don't forget about rapidfirereferrals.com and use the coupon code RFR100 to save $100. This is Bill Cates reminding you that ideas do not make you more successful. Only acting on those ideas will bring you the success you desire. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for listening to the Top Advisor Podcast, brought to you by Proud Mouse Pod Rocket Academy. I encourage you to visit my website, referralcoach.com, for links to my books, online courses, and to register for the Cates Academy.